Never give that enemy a moment when you begin to say, "Why well, I mean, why, why me? Why am I passing through this? Who do you think you are? Do, wait, wait. Do, do you think you are so big that you can't go through what David went through? David, you know what he said? Do you know what David has said? He said, even the army surrounds me. He said, I shall not be afraid. I shall put my trust in the Lord. Do you know what he said when he was passing through difficulties? He said, even though I walk through the shadow of the valley of death, I shall fear no evil. That's what the word of God wants to see you saying. That's how you should confess in what you're passing through. Ah, the way they said, ah, oh, that's it. Then God came down and they said, David is a man after my heart. And God made a ruling. I made him become a king now. Do you know what Joseph went through? I read some of the things Joseph went through. Do you know what he went through? He was hated by his brothers. He was thrown in a pit. You have never gone through that. And yet you're complaining. Why am I hated? Have they thrown you in a pit before? Do, do, you, do you know what it means to be thrown in a pit by your own family members? He was thrown in a pit, not in intention just to throw him, but to kill him. That he must die with the hunger inside the pit. Imagine you dying like that. Why they throw you in a pit and they go. And because you can't walk out and you're a young boy. And because you can't go up until you die there. Do you understand that? Not only that. Then they removed him. I said, no, 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 no. Let's not kill him. Let's sell him. Then they sell him as a slave. And he goes to Egypt. And he's sexually harassed. By the king's wife. Not only that, he's even put in jail for rape case. Do you understand these things? Yet as a word which says what? You shall be elevated above your brothers. And the Bible says this God was doing so that that word which he received began to try him. It's like God says you shall be a millionaire and then you become broke. Let's see if you believe that word. Let's see if you will really believe that word. God says he will use you. You have a great ministry and things begin to go crazy in your ministry. We used to believe what God said. The word will try you and prove you if you are true. If you're following, raise up your hands. I'm following prophet. Now when I see a hand, all those who are following, say, I'm following you, major one. Say, so help me, God. So help me, God. Say it again. Say, so help me, God. Do you understand? So what happened with the king Saul? A man who received a prophecy that you shall you are anointed to inherit God's inheritance. Then God says, I have rejected him. In the first Samuel 15, verse 26, you know what Samuel did? Samuel rejected the word of the Lord. But Samuel said to Saul, I will not return with you, for you have rejected the word of the Lord, and the Lord has rejected you. No, did you hear that? You have what? How many people right now goes into uh, 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 how many people right now do go in moments where they begin to say, "Did the God say this?" That is rejecting what God said. You must be very careful, and I must warn you. Do you know how many people go like, "Will this really happen?" The prophet said, because you have rejected what God said, God also has rejected you from being the king. 
The prophecy was him to remain a king. So God has rejected you. So even if all you have a prophecy to become that, God can actually reverse it. Because you begin to doubt what God said. I showed you in Romans 4.19, the Bible says, against all hope, Abraham still believed. He didn't hear this. Hmm. In, 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 in NIV, the Bible says what? It says, without weakening his faith, he first, the fact that his body was as good as dead. Since he was about a hundred years old, and that Sarah's womb was also dead. Imagine you in that situation. You, you're almost a hundred years, and that is completely not possible. And your wife is about 91 years. Almost impossible. But the man still believed. And some of you are giving up already. Would I ever have a child? Since you are now 54, you think, I don't think this will ever happen. God also will reject you. Imagine you're just 54. You're like, ah, I've, ac I've accepted it. I won't ever get married. Ah, my age. God says, oh, I have also rejected you. We have people right now who think that. Oh, come on. We saw a woman. I gave a woman a prophecy. I said, you. She was 65. I said, you. I said, you will get married this year. She looked at me and said, Papa, what are you talking about? I last had a boyfriend when I was 28. I last had what? When I, I'm 65. And I have one child with that boyfriend when I was 28. What are you talking I said, you get married this year. She said, Papa, I receive. She ma and I said, you're going to give birth to a baby boy. I could even see the audience, how they were looking at him like, Papa, we believe you are our father and our prophet. <laughs> but this prophecy, to a 65 years old woman, what are you talking about? The woman, and you know the woman, she testified. Those who are watching, how many remember that woman? She actually came with a baby. How many remember? Wave your hand if you remember. That woman. All those who are remembering that woman. You see, you can see all those hands over there. The woman, same year, found a boyfriend and got married, same year. True to my prophecy, the following year, she delivered a baby boy. And came to church to testify with the baby boy. And you, you are 43, and you're questioning, will this really happen? You must be joking. The word will try you and see if you can be proven to be true. After receiving a prophecy that, that you're going to get married, that's when now your boyfriend will begin to fight you. Like, ah, but I got a prophecy. What is really this? What is happening? The word can try you. Come on. Everybody you know in the Bible, the word tried them. You want to talk about Noah? God said he's going to save Noah. But guess the shame, humiliation he went through? How he suffered? How he was mocked by people? His own word tried him. You want to talk about Abraham in verse 18? It says what? Against all hope. In verse 18. Against all hope. Abraham in hope believed. Against hope. Him, he had his own hope. The Bible says against hope. In hope, he believed. Against what? There was no hope. Against that, no hope. Him, he had his own hope. He believed. So the word began to fight Abraham. God said, Abraham, you shall give birth to a child. Hey, and I shall fulfill my promise through him. From that moment, things became crazy. He actually spoke to Sarai. I honor Sarah more than Abraham on some other issues. Because imagine that the wife even said to Abraham, say, you know what? Just maybe that prophecy which God said that we shall have a baby is through our maid. <laughs> Abraham was like, oh, I think you're right. <laughs> Somewhere, somehow... <laughs> Abraham, what a wife. Abraham said, what a wife. My wife was the best. 
I think you're right. I think it's a good idea. Are you here? Yeah. But then the wife remembered to say no. And it was too late. She was already pregnant. The wife said, no, Abraham, I think we made a mistake. Didn't God say through me? So the Bible says, and God, listen to me. And the Bible says, and God said, no, 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 no. Not, so Abraham went to God and said, God, you have given him. God said, no, 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 no. Through Sarai, a miracle will happen. Are you, are you here? Against or hope. I have people right now who have questions. I've been praying. I've been believing. I've been fasting. What is really going on over here? That's the dangerous moment where you are right now. It is in that period God can say, you know what? It must never happen with this woman. She's now questioning what we spoke. He is now questioning what we spoke. Are you, are, you, are you here? I have got two minutes to finish, or three minutes. You know, can be prophetic minutes, can be ten, or can be a few seconds. But just know in your mind, two minutes. Against or hope? Now, are, are you here? All right, let's go to um, the scripture. Now, if you, we go, hmm. another, the mo most interesting fact about Joseph is the fact that when the word was trying him, it went that extent that he was put in a pit, sold as a slave. When he was sold, his own brothers went to the father and said, Dad, our brother has been eaten by a lion. So there was Judah, Dan. Don was like, even me, I saw it. They brought a gown, they, they killed a goat and took the blood of a goat and put on his gown and took to the father and said, oh, we only found a gown. Lions have eaten him. And the father took the gown and buried it and he cried. There was a funeral. In the house of Jacob, we have lost our child. All brothers, 11 of them, no one revealed a secret. What hatred is this? Do you think you're hated? You are rejected? Wait until your family members, they, they do a funeral for you when you are alive. That's when you will know that this is hatred. This is what Joseph went through. And through all those when he met his brother, when his brothers were now looking for food, they went to Egypt, not knowing that eventually the man became a prime minister. And when he met him, they didn't even realize it was him. It was his brother that would discover that these are mine. You know, when the man was now in Egypt, his stomach was now like this. If he puts up a tie, the tie will come here and go like this. You will see favor. The body language. They couldn't even know him. When he is smiling, like he must not stop smiling. The brothers couldn't even know him. But he could know them. Because they had the same body. Him, his body had changed. And when he said, you are my brothers, and told them the story, the Bible said they began to apologize. And he said, wait, it was not you doing it. It was the word of the Lord doing it. Do you, do you hear this statement? He discovered it was the word. God was trying him. 
in Genesis 50 verse 20, the Bible says it was the word. He says what? He said it was meant for evil, but God meant it for good. Am I speaking to you? Yes. Some things that God said you shall be can be working against you. Be faithful. Be faithful. Amen. I have never seen anyone in the Bible, nobody in the Bible, who had a prophecy and the word didn't come working against him. Do you understand uh, uh, um, Zechariah? He goes to offer a sacrifice. An angel comes and he says, You shall have a child, and his name shall be John. Do you hear me? And the man doubted. Just because he doubted, the angel says, you shall remain dumb. You shall never speak. Do you know why? Because eventually this man will begin to talk negative things. This man will begin to talk negative things which will affect the birth of the child. So the only way we can do is to make him dumb. And the Bible says the man became dumb. He only began to speak again when the baby was born. He would affect the birth of the child. And some of you are affecting the birth of your own miracles. Of what you say, how you doubt, how you question God. But, but God said this. But God, it's not happening. Things are not happening. I was told this, I was told that. These things, be careful. We go through the same things that you are going through. We go through the same things that we keep on standing. Right now, I can't fly. I can't go to other countries. But do you know the prophecy I have? I shall fill stadiums in America. I shall fill stadiums all over the world. Have I done them? No, not yet. So the word now is trying me what I was taught. Would I still believe it? You think I'm doubting? Against all hope, you will see me in Botswana preaching in the stadium. Amen. Against all hope, I'm telling you in the name of Jesus, you shall see it happening. I, there is no doubt what God says, it shall come to pass. The word can try me as much as they want to try me, I will never doubt it. Never. Never. Am I speaking to you or you? Am I talking to you? Am I speaking to you? Am I talking to you? There was a time we, we were trying to do certain business. So we had a license. And the, the license is there and everything. We want to start trying to do it. Then they came to say, we are revoking the license. But God said it. That we should do the business. And they are revoking the license. I guess the hope. We believed. I'm telling you, it took three years. But the project happened. I guessed the hope. Never, never. Never, never even have a second thought like, like so. Someone has said, since you have rejected the word of God, God too has rejected you. The moment you begin to ask, raise up your hand. Say, Father, help me. Father, help me. No, say it properly. Say it properly. Say, Father, help me. Father, help me. Say it again. Father, help me. Say it again. Say, Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Say it again. Father, help me. Father, help me. Hallelujah. Amen. I said, Hallelujah. Amen. The word of the Lord will try you. <laughs> the word of the Lord will try you. Some of us have been tried right now. Right now. Right now. I, I gave an example before. You know, God said to me, he said, you, he said, I'll bless you. 
You see, he told me exactly how he's going to do it. And I lost everything. When I came to him, allowed, God said, I said, God, where are you? God was quiet. When Joseph was sold, Jacob went to cry to God. God, what happened to my son? I want closure. God was quiet. <laughs> God was quiet. And you know, Jacob is a man who had access to, 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 to the things of the spirit. The Bible says he even saw angels ascending and descending. This is a man who could meet an angel on the road and begin to fight with him until the morning. Yet when they lied about his son that he's dead, no angel came to say it's a lie. Because God wanted that to be like that, to try Joseph. If the father knew it was a lie, the father could start hunting the son and find the son. And the whole word of God would never come to pass. So God had to leave him to go through that. Because it is through that he will be tried and tested and that he will become what God said he will become. I prophesy to you. All the things you have been going through, it has been a test and a trial. And you have stood still and God's word will come to pass in your life. Shout aloud, amen. amen. So never doubt now. Never doubt now. You have withstood things. You have withstood moments. When the enemy came in your mind and said, stop believing, but you still believed. No matter how the voice of the devil has been coming in your mind, you never gave the devil an opportunity. You still believed against all hope. So never give up now. I'm speaking to you now. You keep on believing. Right this minute you're watching me now because you decided never to believe to the devil's voice. You chose to put aside the voice of the devil in your mind, but to put your trust in what God said. And I'm telling you, never give up on that. Because God's word is about to come to pass in your life. If you believe, raise up your two hands and say, it shall come to pass. Are you here? In Genesis 37 verse 20, I want you to see what they were trying to do now about Joseph. They were even planning to kill his prophetic destiny. Let's go to the scripture. And he returned unto his brethren and he said, the child is not. Can you go there quickly? Genesis 37 Verse 20. Come now therefore and let us slay him. Wait a minute. The, the brothers were saying let's kill him. And they'll give a reason why. Okay. They'll give a reason why. Okay. NIV. I, I want somebody to, to, to understand this. Come now. Let's kill him and throw him into one of these what? Sisters. And say that a what? A ferocious animal divide him. Then we'll see what comes of his dreams. The whole reason to kill him was to destroy his prophetic destiny. The whole reason is to destroy his prophetic destiny. You think what you're passing through is just like that? No. The enemy is after your prophetic calling. He knows exactly how God called you. And he knows exactly what God will do through you. And with you, he knows and he wants to cure it. But God won't allow that to happen. I say he will not allow that to happen. Amen. Just keep on believing. Do you understand? In December, the Lord spoke to me to communicate to the youth. And I read a song for the youth. We were saying, keep on moving. Keep on moving. God is not a man. 
You see what I'm saying? No matter what, he keeps his promises. You will be tried. The word of God will try you. Some of these things, the devil will come and will touch you. You know, fellow's wife will come and accuse you. All these things will happen, but it's the word of God trying you. One time I woke up in the morning and I sat down and I said, God, why? I had battles all over me. I said, God, why? I said, God, why? And I made a prayer. If some of you remember that prayer, my media team took that prayer, I think two days ago, and they put it on social media, where I was saying on that day, I said, I said, God, even if you decide to slay me, I will still put my trust in you. I, I'm, I'm that level. I'm sold out to God. Never give up now. Never give up. I gave an example that God said to me, he said, I will take you far. I had a word of prophecy. God spoke to me in 2002 and in 2006. He said, you shall preach in South Korea. Ah! I said, God, no one even knows me in Zuzu. And you are saying I've been in South Korea. God said, I will take you as far. He said, I will, I will increase you. He said, I will make your name known through the preaching of the gospel. I said, trust you me. I said, what is God saying? What is God saying? In 2018, when I was entering in the indoor stadium in South Korea, I just remembered it. I had forgotten about it. When I saw how packed the place was in South Korea, I remember the word. He said, do you remember what God said in 2006? There was no hope. There was no hope. Imagine I'm preaching to people who don't even know English. And I had to prophesy some things. I was prophesying. If you, if you, if you watch the video, I was prophesying things in like Chinchon <laughs> I'm moving this place. It's called Chinchon Hua. <laughs> I said, what is this? I said, what is this? When God says, you'll be tried. In, God spoke in 2006. In 2007, it was the craziest year of my life in ministry. In 2008, worse. I had even our media, Malayan media, jumping now against me. In 2009, it was even worse. I'm telling you, all men of God in Zuzu gang it up. And like, oh, this boy is a satanist. I said, God, these are men of God who are even fighting me. And you are telling me you use me in the body of Christ. How? He said, I will make these men of God around. In 2006, he said, I'll make men of God around this town respect you. And I said, how? Every man of God in Zuzu was against me. God said, I will make them what? Respect you. Two years ago, the same Zuz where all men of God were against me. Two years ago, all men of God gathered together. They said, We want a major one to come and speak to us how we can make it in the ministry. 14 years later, and I went there and I was talking to them, and they were all there. Those who were even I'm like, oh, how are you, sir? He's like, ah, major one. I'm sorry, eh? <laughs> ah. Another one was at the back, and he's like, major, major. I'm like, you, even you. <laughs> what you said you would do, 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 do. and this what you would do, 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 do. and this why you are called Jehovah. Are you here? It's tough when the word is trying you. You better be strong. Never doubt. Otherwise, you're going to delay the process. The 
Never doubt. Are you here? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Never doubt. Never doubt. In the business world, God spoke to me. He said, I will make you sit with the great men. I was so worried that time. I was coming from class. I had not started. And God said I should go and preach somewhere. And I was going to preach somewhere with my Bible. I'll never forget. I was walking. I had this, this, this small, small Bibles in those days. There were small Bibles, the Gideon, Gideon Bible, the small ones. I had a small one, only the New Testament. I will never forget that day. It was in my pocket, and I'm coming from class. And I'm walking to go and preach those people. And I'm like, God, I never studied it today. I never studied it today. And I was passing through a certain area. It was like a forest. A man who looked like an Indian stopped me. I realized it was an angel five minutes later. He said, stop. And I stopped. He said, I know you're worried about your exams. He didn't hear me. He said, you don't have to worry anything. Any degree you want to have, you will have it. Two, he said, you will stand before great people and you do business with the greatest men you know in the world. I looked at him like this and he said, touch my hand. I touched his hand. My hand was paralyzed from here up to here. Numb. He said, go. After I left him like this, when I turned like this, when I turned back like this, there was no one. I said, what? I went to preach. My mind was not in the preaching. It was in the scenario. I said, what just happened there? It's a story everybody around me knows the story, including Prophet Hara here, my son. Here, uh, Prophet Ngambi. Everybody here knows the story. I told everyone, I'm like, this happened. Are you hear what I'm saying to you? What happened? And I, by the hand of God, by the grace of God, the Lord began to open doors and I, I did any course I needed to do with any university that you can name it, including Harvard University. I studied there. I have papers from there. Not only that, I, I was given uh, a testimony yesterday that I have with my wife. We had this wonderful deal, I was in Dubai with my wife and we were sitting there and the door opened up and we were meeting the, the uh, top, top, top kings of Dubai. Dubai, Sharjah, there are different kings there uh, in the UAE. Different kings. We had a meeting with almost all of them. My wife is sitting there, I'm sitting there and we're having all this meeting with this man and we're talking about oil. And we're discussing billions of dollars. My wife whispered in my ears and said, now do you remember what, would you still believe what God said in 2006? I said, I do. You must know this. God said it. Are you understand what I'm saying to you? When I was in Trump Towers, meeting the President Trump's son, in a meeting to discuss business, I remembered but for you to reach there, you have to be tested. I was passing through Goshen City, uh, and I was moving there, and I was standing where we are putting up a five-star hotel. And I'm standing there, and I'm seeing the works happening. I'm like, huh? Would I believe? Would you believe? You have to be tested. Never give up. Never doubt. 